the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish to continue on with the work of St. Paisios of Mount Athos. A young monk came to St. Paisios and asked, Yeronda, I have this thought that in our days, the devil is getting more and more powerful. The devil is full of malice and hatred, but he does not have power. It is God's love that is all powerful. The devil tries to appear powerful, but he does not succeed. He puts on a show of strength for all the world to see, but in reality, he is powerless. Many of his destructive schemes fail even before they start. Would a good father ever allow a few young hoodlums to bully his children? Yet on that, said the young monk, the devil scares me. And Father Paisio, St. Paisio replies, what are you afraid of? Demons have no power. It is Christ who is all powerful. The tempter is decaying and rotten. His weapons are weak. Don't you wear a cross? Christ, if we stop to think about it, has armed us with his cross. It's only when we abandon our spiritual armor that the enemy can overcome and overpower us. An Orthodox priest had only to show a small cross to a man who practiced black magic, and the demon he had invoked started to tremble. Why is the devil so afraid of the cross? Because when Christ suffered the spitting, the blows, and the beatings, the kingdom and the authority of the devil was crushed. How wonderful is the way in which Christ defeated him. As a saint once said, the devil's dominion was crushed with a reed. The moment that Christ was given the last blow on the head with the reed, the devil's power was destroyed. In other words, patience is our spiritual defense, and humility our greatest weapon against the devil. The greatest balm that Christ sacrificed on the cross gave us is the crushing of the devil. After the crucifixion, the devil became like a snake with no poison, like a wild dog without teeth. The demons were pulled, and they are now disarmed, while we are now armed with the cross. There is nothing wonderful visual. That night, a whole bunch of demons had gathered on the roof. At first they banged with sledgehammers. Then they made all kinds of noise, as if they were rolling big logs and tree stumps. I started making the sign of the cross at the ceiling, and I began chanting, Thy cross we venerate, O Lord, and we glorify thy holy resurrection. When I stopped, they again started. Now I said to myself, said St. Paisios, we'll have two choirs. You from up there with the logs, and I from down here. And whenever I would start, they would get quiet. And at some point I chanted, Thy cross, we venerate, O Lord, and we glorify thy resurrection. And at another point, Lord, you, Lord, you have given us your cross as a weapon against the devil. 
the sec Caesius went on to say, I spent the most delightful night in psalms and melody. When I would stop for a while, they would start the entertainment. Every time they put on a different performance for me. A young monk asked him then, didn't they leave the first time you chanted? And he replied, no. As soon as I stopped, they would begin again. Both choirs had to have their vigil. It was such a beautiful vigil. I chanted with such longing. Oh, those were the days, he said. And then another monk asked, Yerunda, what does the devil look like? You know how beautiful he is? He's something else. You only have to see him to believe it. But God's love does not allow us to see the devil. If we did, most people would die from fear. I imagine if they could see how he operates, if they could see his sweet form, there may be some, of course, who might really be entertained by him. And St. Paisio says, like the movies, our people would be entertained. But to get to see this kind of show, one must pay a lot beforehand. And even then, the devil might not manage to see anything. And people would ask, does the devil have tails and a horn? Of course, he's fully equipped. Yet on that, did the demons become so ugly when they fell from grace and from angels? Did they become demons? St. Paisius would reply, of course. And now they look as if they have been struck by lightning. When lightning strikes a tree, doesn't it turn it into charred stump? That's what demons look like. For a while, I used to say to the devil, come on. Let me see what you look like. It will incite me to avoid falling into your hands. And St. Paisios would finish and by saying, one look is enough to see how evil you are. All the things I would suffer if you ever got a hold of me, he would tell the novices. Which brings us to the final point. Is the devil stupid? And a young monk asked, Yaranda, does the devil know what we have in our hearts? Now stop and really think about this. There's no way he can know the human heart. Only God has the knowledge of our hearts, and sometimes he reveals what is in our hearts to those who belong to him. For he, for he reveals to those around us, rather, for our own good. The devil knows only the mischief and the evil that he himself plants to hearts in the hearts of those who serve or listen to him. But he does not know our good thoughts. Sometimes the evil one the devil, he figures it out from experience, but even then, he usually misses the point. He can only succeed if God permits it. Otherwise, he is in the dark and constantly off target. And when we say off target, visibility, zero. He totally misses the mark. For instance, instance, he has no way of knowing when a good thought crosses 
our mind. But if a bad thought crosses our mind, he is aware of it right away because he is the one who has planted it there. Now St. Paisio comes and says, for example, I want to do something good to save someone from the devil. Does not, but the devil does not know what my intention is. When, however, he puts the thought in my mind, go and save the person, and with it, he also plants pride in my heart, then he knows what I am thinking. The very moment we accept the pride, he plants it in our heart. Then we have given in to temptation. We have given the evil one the right to control us. These things are very subtle. You remember what happened to Abba Makarios? Once Abba Makarios ran into the devil as he was coming back from a nearby desert where he had gone to tempt the monks. And the devil said to him, All the brothers are very angry with me, except one who is my friend and he obeys me. But when he sees me, he spins like a wheel. And who is this brother? The abbot said. Theoptos, the godsend, is his name. The devil answered. So, the blessed man went to the desert and found the monk. To reveal his thoughts to him. And this way the monk was helped. And when he ran into the devil again, he asked him about the monks. Everyone is very angry with me, the devil answered. And the worst of it is, even my friends, my even my friend has now changed. I cannot figure out why. St. Paisios now tells us, now he is the angriest of all. The devil did not know that Abba Makarios had gone to the brother and helped him, because the saint had acted with humility and out of love. This leaves the devil powerless over this particular thought. If Abba Makarios had taken pride with him instead and went, he would have dispelled God's grace and given the right to the evil one. Then the devil would have known what was in his mind because he would have been the one who caused it by letting pride enter Makarios instead of humility. If we would have a good thought and tell another person about it, can the devil hear or tempt us afterwards? How can he hear it when the thought has no devil in it, when the thought has no evil within it? But if the purpose behind our words is to show up, to boast, to be prideful, well then, of course, the devil is behind it, man will fall into temptation. In other words, if there is a predisposition, for pride, boasting, ego, bragging, especially if we say, I will save this man, well, the devil will get involved and know right off the bat what we are thinking. If we act with humility, kindness, and love, there's no way the devil knows 
what is going on. He has no idea what's in the person's heart. We need to be careful. These are the subtle things. These are the subtle things that St. Paisios, Paisios talks about to the monks who gather to listen to him. That is why the fathers say that the spiritual life is the science of all sciences. How come then, asks a young monk, a fortune teller can tell three women that one will get married, the other one will suffer a misfortune, and the third will remain unmarried. And things actually turn out that way. That's because the evil one is experienced. Just like an engineer can determine fairly well when a house will collapse by merely looking at it, so too the devil can look at how we live our lives and has the experience to tell where we are going and how we will end up. The devil is not intelligent. He's actually very foolish. And St. Paisio even says the devil is tangled up and cannot be unraveled. Some of the things he does are smart, and some of the things St. Paisio tells, says about the devil are stupid. But his schemes are very crude. God has mercifully seen to that, so that we can recognize him. Unless, of course, we are so blinded by pride, ego, and the seven deadly sins that we cannot realize who he is. In the words of St. Paisios, and I'll conclude with these, when we are humble, we can recognize the devil's trap because humility enlightens us and brings us into the kinship with God. Humility disables the devil. Amen.